DR since that day with my wife and I'm coming back and I see that uh, everything remains the same. Because I remember the first three days after the earthquake, I found myself sleeping uh, right across in my next door neighbor's house. His house didn't get completely destroyed. Hey. Come away, everybody. Okay, babe. Good to see you again. Actually, this is where, after that earthquake, we all been staying at. And it turned out to be one of the three camps we have here. This was the first erected, organized camp. We're in here, we even have access to the internet. We managed to uh, get on the net, make long distance calls. And at night, we managed to find a place to stay and sleep. It's called survival. Basically, this is um, an internet cafe. At the time, people had um, needed to call their relative in the state or elsewhere in the world, what I did is I took whatever equipment that I had left that I could save, so I basically took them and I brought them here. A generator right there in the back. So in case the, the inverter battery failed, so I could always start the car for an hour or two, so it kind of recharged the battery. And from there, I get it from the power inverter. And if, that's, if the battery, the inverter battery didn't get enough charge, then I would put in the car, I would start the car, and I would plug everything in a single battery that keep me going. We're living with the little bit we got left from what we had before, and uh, we're just sitting tight, hoping that things, you know, will get better. Every house is, every single house, I mean, all the houses that used to be in this neighborhood, it's either they all fell down, and even those that seemingly, that look like you know, nothing had happened to them, you gotta see inside or the back of them and you, you will realize that you know, there is no survivor as far as the houses are concerned. I was standing right here when the earth started shaking. And then I looked down and I look up for the truck. So there were no truck. I said, uh-oh, earthquake. And I ran in the, right in the middle of the street while the earth was still shaking and this fell down. <laughs> this is the front of the school where I believe until now there are some students uh, uh, upstairs. There was a guy that was still alive we pulled him right here. Apparently he was stuck right there. So we pulled him, we gave him food. Not a scratch. Not a scratch, but he Not was just scratch. cut in between, you know, the rubble. Now, uh, this, this, this is a clinic. That gives you an idea. I mean, this is like the third floor of that school I was showing you guys that fell here. The lady, she actually lives in the States. And from time to time, she'd come here to Port-au-Prince, you know, to see how the house is like, to collect the rent because she had a lot of uh, people to whom she rented. I was working on, on, on the computer and she passed by and said hi to me. I just said hi. She, 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 said, she says, you must get up and come and kiss me because I'm like your mom. I'm like, okay, so I got up and went and kissed her. That's the last kiss I will ever give to her because like five minutes later, she had just gotten back into the house and I was watching the house collapsing. Uh, until now, we have not even been able to pull her from the rubble. Her brother that came here was doing some work in trying to pull her out of there. They found the body, but the body was cut underneath of so, uh, like a pile of debris, that when they tried to pull her out, I believe it's just one arm of hers that came out and a leg. Whatever else, you know, that was left from her is still. It's been Haitians helping out Haitians because uh, we're the ones that went inside the house despite the bad smell, despite the risks and everything, but we felt like at least they, they deserve to be buried. Now, the, the first floor is what you cannot see. And that's where the American citizen lost his life, both him and his wife. And we, we, we dug, we made the hole right here. In America. And uh, we threw both him and his wife in there. Okay, it was a... Uh, <laughs> Now guys, when you, when you look at this, one has to wonder how did these people make it out of there, you know, alive? That was the only way in and out. I was in the middle of the day, and I was in the middle of the day. In the middle of the day, I was in the middle of the day, and I was in the middle of the day, and I was in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. 
Mais quand même, tout le monde a tombé. Vous-même, qui j'en fais ou sorti Il sorti tout bon Dieu. Il bon Dieu. Parce que le dame t'est couché après ça. Oui, il a filmé dans le cou. But uh, at night, I, I can't sleep really. You know? I, don't, I don't tell people these things. Yeah. I mean, you know, me, myself, I've, uh, I, don't, I haven't been sleeping well um, since that night. You know, every day you sleep, you never know when the earth is going to be shaking. You don't know how long. The Basically, 39 seconds change our life forever. Yeah, forever, forever. Every aftershocks, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting desperate. <laughs> I I'm getting desperate because I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I may not have a house anymore. I don't have a permanent job, but I'm getting by. I find little contracts here and there with my friends. Like, I believe in Haiti, and I believe in the future. And I hope that, indeed, this will be a turning point where things will start moving in a more positive way than they have been so far.